Hi everyone, it's Mel from My Paper Oasis. I'm back again this week for another live video and a bit of a demonstration on um, a couple of tips and tricks I have for using the Delicate Details um, stamp set. So a while ago I made this card for one of the Casing the Caddy challenges. Um, and there's a couple of tips and tricks on how to make this so that you line up all your gorgeous delicate detail um, stamps. And I'm also going to show you how even though our um, stitched shape framelits are squares, how to create this um, rectangle shape for your stitched shapes. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm making a different card tonight. It's completely on the hop. I haven't made it before. I'm bumping the camera again. Um, so we'll have a go and see how we go. So this is the stamp set I'm using. It's delicate details with all these beautiful lacy elements. So they can be used individually on cards. They make beautiful borders and accents. Um, but tonight what I'm going to do is layer them all together. And I am using all five of these stamp sets. Now this is a celebration stamp set. So it's in our, oh my gosh, sorry guys, our very first little celebration catalogue that came out. And as you can see, this ends on the 31st of March um, this year. So it is the, what is it today? The 26th of March. So there's five days left of celebration. So five days to get your free goodies. You can choose something out of this catalogue. Um, there is a few extra um, things like our glimmer paper and stuff that was introduced and then there was a whole list that I have listed on my Facebook page that Stamping Up has included for the last five days as well. So five days is it to get your freebies for every $90 you spend. Great way to get some free stamps and free papers. So if you've got a place and order let me know and I'll pop one in this week. Okay so with the delicate details like I said, we're going to use all five of these stamp sets and it was going to be a bit tricky to do on camera. So what I've done is I've lined them up already for you to show what I'm going to do. So the easiest way to line up all of these stamp sets or the, sorry, these stamps is to actually use your grid paper. It's fantastic because it's got all the grid lines on it already for you. And you can start with the first stamp. Um, across the top there and lining it up across your lines. Now photopolymer is designed that you can bend it and mold it to put it on a block so you can shape it if you want to. So even these you could shape as a circle so you could stamp half this way and then um, like you put it onto the block so it's in a circle shape which is fantastic but the issue is when you're trying to put it on a block sometimes they bend out of shape on you and that's not what you want. So we want them all straight so that's what we're going to do um, today. So the easiest way to do that is to actually line up your paper, your stamps on your paper. Now I think mine has moved a bit in that paper moving. So you just do it very delicately. Haha, <laughs> delicate details, get it? Um, so yeah, line them up on your paper. Now as you can see, I've got a few moved across this way and that's because it's maybe a bit tricky to see on that design. But these are little points, I want to sit in these curves when the curve, I've got the curve this way. So I want those points to sit in the curve so I've moved um, the stamp set up slightly um, so that they can all kind of um, blend together. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your block. Now this is one of our bigger size blocks but as you can see it doesn't really fit over all of the blocks like over all, all the stamps we do have the bigger one if you want to do that so we've got this really big one that you can use as well um, but the impression that I want to get from my stamps is going to fit with this block so I'm happy to use this block you may want to use the bigger block if it's up to you um, so I find the bigger block a bit trickier to stamp with so I'm just going to use this one for the time being but I need to make sure that I'm going to get these edges in that are a little bit off so I'm going to make sure that they're kind of at the edge. So once you've got them lined up and you can do this with any photopolymer stamp set is literally put your block on top of your photopolymer. So we're going to pop that, squish that down and peel them up and then they are all exactly where you want them to be. Okay. So that is a great trick for your photopolymer. If you're worried about them bending when you're putting them down on your blocks, make sure they are straight on a piece of paper and put your block on the top to get them. So tonight what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do something similar to what is in the catalogue. Where is it again? I want to do this kind of inked look on the background. Um, I'm not going to do bride and groom. In fact, I don't think I got a sentiment stamp out, so that will be fun. 
Um, but I am going to at least do the background and sponge it with you and then I'm going to show you how to create this um, rectangle. So what I'm going to do is ink this one up in Versamark. I've got my white embossing powder here. I have got a little piece of paper to put my embossing powder in and I've also got my stamping buddy. So when you're doing a stamping buddy, when you're doing something this fine, I'd always kind of recommend using your stamping buddy. It just um, alleviates a bit of static and stuff off of your paper. So it means that um, the chance of the embossing powder sticking where it shouldn't is near minimal. Okay, so the hardest part when you do this now that you've got all your stamps lined up on your block is actually lining it up on your cardstock. So I try and get mine as straight as possible. Now we've got lots of stamps here. So don't be tempted to ink like this because you'll never get it covered. So always when you've got lots, a big stamp or lots of stamps, always turn your ink pad over and stamp on your um, pads. Get your stamp ink, get your ink on your stamps. I can talk, I really can, um, by turning it upside down and give them a good coat because it is Versamark. Okay, so the hardest part now is actually lining them up on your piece of paper. Now I tend to eyeball, but some people would prefer a stamp and a jig and you can use what you like. So I'm going to eyeball, I can see the top of the paper straight there with my block, which is why I'm just going to do that. Now you've got long stamps, okay? So sometimes pushing just on the edges is not going to get a good coverage in the middle. And I know this from experience with this stamp set. So peel that one off. And we're going to ink up again because we're going to stamp this the whole way down the cardstock. Now the next thing is trying to see where the Versamark has been in the first place. So I need to just crane my neck a little and I can see where the shadow is um, without moving my card um, my cardstock from where the last stamp was. So this is where it gets trickier to kind of line up straight. So we're just gonna have a go and see how we go. Inking that one. And then there's a tiny little bit more at the very bottom. So I'm just going to do one more layer and I really just need to ink up those top bits for this one. And I'm going to stamp that one down as well. And again, you're looking for the mark that you've left. And I can see I've gone a little bit crooked, but I can live with that. So hopefully you can too. Okay, so setting that aside, always close up your Versamark ink pad before you apply powder in case it gets covered in powder, because then it's not going to be any good. Pop our mat to the side. Now I have this fantastic paper that oh has sprinkles all over it. That's going to be fun to see what happens. So you can use special things. I just use an A4 piece of paper most of the time to do this because it's easy, it's on hand. Give it a good sprinkling because embossing powder is something that you can reuse so it doesn't matter if you tip the whole tub on. You can start at the top and then just slide the way down but I just tend to give it all a good coat, I don't mind. And shake off the excess. The tricky bit here is tapping off all the excess. Okay, so you, can you see, yes you can, can you see that white? So that is the powder. Another trick people is to always make sure your powder is away before you turn your heat iron on. So see, see how easy it is when you've got just an A4 piece of paper, just stick it all back in the pot and put it to the side. Just like that. Okay, now I actually am going to pull out a pair of tweezers for this. And I'm going to get my tweezers right in the gap. And I'm going to turn on my heat gun so it's going to get a bit noisy. I do apologise. Oops, and it's going to slip around. And just heat up your embossing powder. Now you can heat it from the back if you want to so you can see when the change occurs. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this white on white, um, but you can see, you can definitely see the um, embossing powder changing while you're heating it. It gets a real glossy effect and that's what you're looking for. That's when you know that it's heat set. If you leave it a little bit powdery, it's, it will rub off. It definitely needs to be heat set. Okay, so sorry, this is going to take a couple of minutes. I didn't do one like a prior one. So, just let me heat all of this up. Make sure you get your edges. Edges are very important. Like that edge right there. Okay, so can you see 
all of that white embossing. See how it's nice and shiny so that you know that it's nice and cooked thoroughly. So that's how you're going to line up your stamps so that you can get a nice even look and coverage to this. Now I'm going to start with a little bit of peekaboo peach and you can use one of our brayers on this if you want so you could use one of these you could use our little sponge daubers I'm just literally going to use a sponge and give it a rub so I'm just going to probably shake the camera a heap while I'm doing this and I'm just going to rub the ink over this card now remember when you sponge something you can do it as dark or as light as you like okay if you want a like stronger look you just literally keep rubbing and you want to make sure that you go over that embossing and take off the extra color now we also have our um, paper that is already pre embossed like this so that if you wanted to you can literally just color Oh wow, these colours are going to be bright. This is our Flirty Flamingo. I've chosen some of um, our current in colours for this. Which reminds me, don't forget that our other in colours are retiring shortly. So it's not going to be long before they're gone. Our Mint Macron range and Tip Top Torp. Now that mustn't have heat set properly there because I can see that it's actually stuck a little bit. The importance of heat embossing everybody make sure that you do it properly now I'm just normally I would have a different sponge for different colors but this one I'm actually just rotating around and then I'm going to do our sweet sugar plum at the bottom so you could of course do whatever colors that you want different depths of color this would be a great technique with um, baby wipe technique which I might show you in another video okay so that will do for that I'm going to have very inky fingers. I need to wipe that off a bit in case I get it on everything else. And I think I got out some sweet sugar plum to mount this on before I mount it onto some black card stock just for a bit of effect. Let me see what it's like without it. Now I'm going to pop it on. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm literally going to just pop that onto the sweet sugar plum just like that now it is still a little bit wet because it's sponged but that's okay and then I'm just going to mount this onto um, a black card base so this is um, again just a piece of A4 card stock cut in half at four and an eighth and folded in half so we're just going to pop this centered and I left a nice big black space around this I wanted a nice big black space around this one so there we go so that's the card base done a little bit different a little bit pretty a bit snazzy then you could certainly do that with whatever colors you want and I'm going to just pop on a little bit of our sweet sugar plum ribbon across the middle as well because I'm kind of doing a little bit like what this one was with our beautiful gold and just um, trimming off the edges and nearly got my fingers there which is not fun with these scissors there we go so trimming a little bit of an edge there as well but you can see that pretty much your stamping is um, quite straight like that it's got nice even gaps because you layered it all up on your block like this to begin with so it doesn't matter how many times you stamp down the cardstock all the gaps and everything are going to be the same so make sure that when you're doing it that you actually don't move these off the block just stamp as many times as you like while they're on the block and you'll end up with a nice even coverage Okay, I'm going to move this to the side while I show you how to make this um, rectangle, which is a little bit tricky. So here comes Mr. Big Shot. Let me make sure I can get him on the camera. I just need to move a few things. There we go. So this is our little stitched shape framelit. I'm going to get ink all over this white piece of cardstock. I can see it now. So what I've done is the only way your die will cut is when you have the pressure from your plates okay so you're going to have you've got your, I've got the magnetic platform and the clear plate and the pressure to cut out your framelit is when you have all of your plates together 
So when I put this plate over the top, it's going to cut wherever all these plates are. So if you notice what I've done is I've hung my paper over, but I've also hung the edge of this die over here because I don't want that bit to cut. I want to make it a rectangle. So by not applying the plate or moving it off the bottom plate here, it's not going to be able to cut that little piece there. And it doesn't have to be off much, but it's off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is run that through the big shot and this is going to shake the table so I do apologize but we're going to run that through and pull it out the other side and then you can see how it's only cut partially cut that frame okay so what I want to do then is I want to turn it around the other way and I'm going to do the same thing. So you can keep going along and along and along as much as you like. It gets a little bit fiddly, but you can make much longer ones if you want. But for tonight's purposes, I'm only going to do this one. And you need to line it up. Now you can feel, like I can feel that. Obviously you can't feel that, but I can feel that that's in those grooves. So it kind of sticks into the grooves while you try to push it. And then what you're going to do is run that through again. And this is going to be a long rectangle. And because that bottom bit was off the plate again here, as you can see, it won't have cut that last piece. So then voila, how about that? You have your um, little rectangle plate. So that is the easiest way that you can make rectangles from your square, um, your stitch shape square framelit. And of course you can do that with any square if you wanted to make any of our square framelits into a rectangle, although generally that's easier to cut. But if to get these like stitched shapes, the actual stitches, that's what you want to do with your stitch shape framelit. So I hope that helps you all. So then of course I would like to mount this on here, except I haven't got a stamp handy to do that. Let me. Um, I'm going to stop it there. And I will finish this card with a little bit of bling and a stamp here and maybe a little piece of black behind it as well to really pick up that white. I love it with this black background. But of course, because I've cut a rectangle, I actually need to now measure this rectangle before I can cut the backing piece because it's really tricky to try and get the same kind of size rectangle every time. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I hope, um, you know, that's really helped you work out a little bit with these beautiful, delicate details um, in that stamp set and um, also how to make these rectangles if you've been wondering how everybody's doing that. Um, that's just a little tip and trick for you. Remember, um, there is only five days left of celebration, five days to get your freebies. So if you want any freebies, I highly recommend you pop an order in with me this week so that I can get them out to you. Um, as far as I know, everything is still available in the Australian market. Um, remember, our re inkers are going out, so if you want to, I would highly recommend, um, not our re inkers, our ink colours, I'd highly recommend that you get them in an order if you don't want to miss out on our mint macarons and watermelon wonders, um, papers, inks, all of those kinds of things, ribbons, all of that will retire at the end of this year with the new catalogue. Um, and it's school holidays coming up, so I won't be around for a couple of weeks doing a Sunday night live. Um, I am going to on stage in a couple of weeks where I get a sneak peek at the brand new catalogue so I'm super excited about that and um, maybe I can share a few things with you when I get back um, and I'm also looking at doing fortnightly videos when I get back the weekly videos are getting a little bit much with family life so I'm going to try and do fortnightly and see how we go what I would love for you to do is to in the comments below I'd love for you to comment what you would like me to do on live videos. Any tips, techniques, stamp sets you want me to use, whatever you can think of so that I can build a list and we can work our way through. Um, and I may draw a prize after people have done that um, so that you guys can have a, um, whoever I choose out will get um, a little gift. But I really love for you to comment and let me know what you'd all like me to be doing. Have a really great Easter. Have a safe Easter, everyone. Take care and I will see you after the school holidays. Bye now.